So, <laughs> before we dive into all things moon related, I'd love to give anybody who's listening a little bit of an intro about you. Anybody who hasn't heard about your work, who hasn't met you, could you share a little bit about yourself, your gifts, and your story before we dive in? Yeah, I'd love to share. So basically at this point, I work as a, an intuitive guide. My business is called Soulful Guiding, and that name arose many years ago based on an intention to really support, really help to guide people in a soulful way. And that to me, you know, I know the nature of, of the industry I work in is very esoteric. It can be very new agey. And yet I wanted to bring in the soul, you know, like really be practical with this because I know for myself, you know, from a really young age, as far back as I can remember, I I knew there was something more to this life. Like I always knew it. And yet religion never satisfied that I didn't grow up in a, you know, a spiritual family. There was no, there was no culture around the divine, you know, like the universe, like the magic that we live in. And I actually got kicked out of Sunday school, which I am very proud of to this day <laughs> because, you know, I asked too many questions and my curiosity was so potent. And, um, and my astrology really speaks to that, but I won't go into my personal <laughs> natal chart, but that curiosity just, it only got stronger, Christina, to the point where when I first was exposed to astrology in teenage magazines, like I was a teenager in a time pre-internet, pre-social media, and I would read these magazines and the horoscopes and the astrology, just it just stood out to me and, and that was it. I was hooked from that moment on. And so I've been studying astrology I've been studying, like at that age, around 15, I went deep into dream analysis, like anything I could get my hands on, palmistry, numerology. It was around that time that the tarot cards were gifted to me, my first set, and I started to dive deep with the symbology and explore concepts that I couldn't find anywhere else. I just, and I started this, relationship this engagement this interaction with something more than what I was being taught at school and it has just you know continued to develop and unfold my curiosity has taken me on adventures to the Himalayas where I've you know sat in caves with deities and you know ended up in retreats in Israel doing silence meditation retreats I've done multiple silence and beautiful retreats with the monks in monasteries and, you know, I've just found that this desire to want to find where I am in the universe has just led me to this place where I now try to help people do the same. So right now my work is mostly focused on one-on-one -on -one sessions with people helping them navigate their own personal astrology, trying to make sense of what's going on in their personal lives, of what's going on in the collective story and how that affects their own individual reality. Because I really found astrology helped me learn how to be with the ebbs and the flows and the cyclical nature of life. You know, it's not always up, 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 positive and it's not always down and heavy, that there are phases and timings. And astrology has really helped me to try to make sense of the timings I'm in. And that's what I really share with clients. Like, where are you at? What are the cycles that are playing out? What's happening in your natal chart, which speaks to characteristics or personality traits even, or experiences that you'll likely encounter in your life. So I really spend a lot of time helping people make sense of that 
And another piece where my work is evolving more and more is into meditation and rituals. And the rituals have evolved from a desire to help people experience astrology rather than just read on the apps or, you know, in social media or some random bit of information that your son is in Libra or whatever. Ritual is a way to get in and really feel into the symbology and really open up this cosmic conversation with the universe, you know, and open yourself to myths, stories, universal, eternal themes that every human has experienced forever. It's like I just I can't imagine life without it, Christine. I just I cannot. So so that's I dedicate my life to really trying to help people make sense of these esoteric um you know, new age themes in ways that relates directly to them individually and how does that impact my everyday reality that's what I'm really passionate about mm. Mm. I've always loved that about you that that realness and that connection to to this physical life right I, mm. I I first of all I love that we both have soul in our in our chosen business names right that there's there's yes. something there of I feel from having known you for about a decade like there's we both have had this lifelong knowing that there's something bigger and I know for myself you know having grown up in Germany there's a very practical and logical component in me so I I always need to have the merging of these worlds mm. um, I can't be too far out there also me personally living in a space that that um you know is the mecca of new age and sometimes it's very galactical and I'm like but what about these bodies that we have for this mm -hmm. lifetime like what are we going to do with those and what do, do all these things mean and so I love how you always bring bring meaning that I can use in like the the real world and as you're saying with the rituals of like normalizing those as well because I feel that as humans, whatever we do, it's actually a ritual. And so if we're not conscious about it, it becomes something that maybe we're not really wanting to create because we're not aware mm -hmm. that it actually means something. So I love that you're bringing that in as well. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Well, for me, you know, something <clears throat> with regard to ritual, the actual mm -hmm. definition of ritual is engaging in an act where the meaning of the actual act itself is greater than, than the act. Mm -hmm. So I love the analogy of I can go in and wash the dishes and I can clean my kitchen and I can just do that and be upset, frustrated that my kids didn't do it. You know, that's been my reality for a long time. Or I can stop and turn it into a ritual and that doesn't mean I have to light incense and put on sacred music. Sometimes I do do that, by the way, um, but that doesn't define or make it by definition a ritual. It's that I then stop when I'm in a more mindful, aware place and I go, why am I doing this? I am cleaning my kitchen because I am passionate about living in a sacred space that nourishes me, my work, my children, and creates harmony. And that's when it becomes a ritual. It's that moment where you engage with meaning, like we are meaning machines. That's what we are. Everything that I think is creative, expansive, for me, extremely nourishing about being a human is the meaning I give it. So I do dedicate a lot of my time to trying to help my clients find a meaning in their life experiences by engaging with the archetypes in astrology, the symbology the tarot and the, the deeper conversation we can have so that you can literally connect with a meaning in your life that can give you peace. We have that power as humans. We really do. And I think that's something that we're stepping into more and more because we all know astrology is very popular right now. I'm not scared of being burnt at the stake, even though I was before I started. 
Um, and that probably won't last forever. There's a lot of people speculating when will this latest, you know, trend of astrology subside? I don't think it will for a while. But for right now, you know, there's this really big uh, journey into um, working with astrology as a way of finding different meaning about our lives. Like we are starting to realise we can go beyond our trauma by by looking at it, by witnessing it, by sitting with it, we can face our trauma and we can work with the meaning we give it in this moment and that can change the past. We can't change what happened but our meaning in this moment, sitting with an astrologer, sitting with a healer, the beautiful work you do, your gorgeous jewels, like this is all about, okay, I've been through stuff but I've got this meaning now and your life changes and it's not just for weirdos it's not just for certain people this is everybody's birthright is to shift the way they experience what has happened in their lives and for me astrology and ritual sitting with people like us the work we do it's a way to access another version of your events not just you know Again, like looking in the mirror and going, I love myself, you know, and just pretending. We're not talking about pretend. We're talking about sitting and looking and being with what's happened and then shifting the story. So, yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. you can, yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about this. And I think Mm -hmm. this is where we're headed as a species. And this is why ritual um, will become stronger, not this like weird are you sacrificing animals, you know, bizarre, um, you know, stories we have about it. It's going to keep opening up into a place where it's like, yeah, it is all about the meaning Mm -hmm. and astrology will get stronger and all of these things. But, Yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more from you about that piece where ritual, we're already in ritual in our lives. Right. Everything you're just saying, it resonates so deeply, even just from just my morning that I just had. I was sitting in the grass under a really beautiful banyan tree and there was this clarity that came of like this, this life needs to be lived while it's happening. And, and it really is about how I spin this story inside of me. It It, it really, truly is that. And so I feel that we live in a time where it's it's a bit challenging to figure out what we can trust and what we can believe and what mm-hmm. I know for myself what's been happening more and more and more is I I almost go back to my to my roots and even beyond like the roots of where I was born in this lifetime but to my ancestors and my lineage and and that's where um this conversation that about the moon is coming in I mm-hmm. was born in Bavaria in the south of Germany, which is a very strong pagan tradition where the farmers, everybody lived by the cycles of the moon. And I'm just noticing how very naturally with the the external chaos, with the chaos, the moment I get onto the devices and my system gets like jittery, how I feel drawn to practices, studies, rituals that are taking me back to that that really old wisdom that really goes back to nature and then beyond nature. I mean, the stars, the galaxies, they're nature as well, right? They're just beyond our understanding of what that even, it's so out there, but the moon is the closest one. And um, that is why I have been working for the past year together with you on, on bringing this collection through because I, for myself, more and more, I am living by these rhythms again, by these cycles as a woman with my own personal cycle, but also here in Bali, like it it literally everything, there's ceremonies around the full moon, around the new moon, and there are different energies in, in the world, depending on these phases. And to acknowledge that, yes, the world might be going crazy, but there are some some rules of the universe that have not changed and that will be there. And there's something so soothing to my system 
to know that it like takes me back to my mother and it takes me back to almost to the womb of like I'm good I'm safe and um I I just went into way more than um than I thought would come through but it's almost like my question my, my next question was gonna be like what in your understanding is it about the moon that um you know, has me spend a whole year to design a collection, to design, to make this moon calculator with you. And your mm -hmm. offerings are very much around the moon as well. In your understanding, what is it? What's the significance of the moon in our lives, of the moon and astrology? Share a little bit mm -hmm. with us about that. Wow, that was beautiful, by the way. Thank you. You've just activated some things in me in a good way um so the okay so in western culture we moved to and I'm very bad at remembering facts like actual details but we moved to the Gregorian calendar which is based on the solar cycle the, the cycle of the sun and earth's relationship to it 365 days to go around the sun And that coincided with the Enlightenment period, um, you know, and then we went into this, you know, industrialization of society and things just started getting very outer, very material. Science was kicking in and we're trying to understand the world outside of us objectively. Science, you know, it's like we can observe and, and there's so much value in science. I am not anti it and it's not the whole story. And our ancestors, They were more of the lunar living because they could easily observe that with their naked eye. Everybody on earth, and you can only just imagine without all the devices what we were paying attention to. We were paying attention to the moon and to the seasons. And so I often go back and just go, well, what did that look like back then? What did Venus look like as she goes through her beautiful journey where she literally goes from being visible in the morning to the evening. She disappears for 40 days um, every 18 months and she becomes a completely different visible object. So, you know, there's so much beautiful myth and story about just that on its own from our ancestors. Thousands of years we've been looking at this. So we're moving Well, we moved away from a more lunar style, which is introverted, which is introspective, which is in rhythm with the natural cycles. There's artifacts where women would carve on bones their menstruation cycle. That's a ritual. We've been connecting to the moon for as far back as history, recorded history um, can go. So... Then we shifted to the solar phase, which I believe is an expansion of humanity. And now what we're starting to see is, wait a minute, we've gone so out, so external, so much in that materialism, that A plus B equals C. But we've lost that. And so there's this natural movement towards more of this lunar way of being. People are like, it's too much. This is obviously my general observation. And so connecting with the lunar phases pulls you into something more subtle. You know, it's something, it's the nighttime, it's evening, it's cyclical, it's right there. Uh, all of most cultures refer to the moon as the mother, you know, the one that's always watching, ever present. In the Vedic lineages, the oldest lineages, And in Vedic astrology, which I'm not an expert on at all, but I've dipped in the curiosity in me. Um, and it is, they see the moon as the, it's like it's recording all of history because it's always been there. So in your natal chart, your moon placement, in, it can relate to, um, if you want to go into a more spiritual cosmic perspective, to your past lives. And that's why when you sit with a Western astrologer, they'll say your moon is your internal place because you're already that. So in a sense, you've, you're already your moon. It's already how you experience the world. It's always been there. And so 
this journey back to the lunar phases for me personally and working in ritual with it way before I started journeying with groups. I hadn't realized until I started to put together an offering how much it had been this touchstone in my personal life. And I'm not saying I had a fully well-developed lunar practice a long time ago, but there are key moments where the, the moon and especially the eclipses, which is a whole other thing, have been so instrumental in my personal journey. And so, yeah, now I've been working with people and I'm watching, well, I'm listening to their feedback, Christina, and, and it's a moment, and the way I approach working with the lunar phases, it's a moment to stop, to listen, and to go within because the truth is everybody already has the wisdom within, truly. This isn't a cosmic thing. Everyone knows what they need to do or what they need to let go of or what they can commit more strongly to. And engaging with the lunar phases is a way to be empowered with that, to stop and go, this is what I need to release. This is how I want to be. So the shift, and as you were saying, I lived in Bali as well. It's where we met and spent time in Asia and the cultures that still live with the lunar calendar, there's a there's a rhythm, there's a pace that they live in that is so different. I am not saying it's better. And I really feel that there's the potential for this lunar and the, the solar and the lunar coming together. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a merging of science, let's say, and spirituality within our lifetime. But that's a whole other bigger cycle, astrological prediction, which I won't go into now. <laughs> oh, there are a few moments where my body just relaxed and sighed. Um, yes, you were mentioning it's the nighttime, it's the going inward, yeah. it's the quieting down and and the balance of it, right? I can I can so see how this solar time has been. Like, look what humanity has created. There is a lot of beauty and genius that has come through. And we might have gone a bit too far and a bit too lunatic, right, on just taking and expanding. And, and it gives me chills to feel, okay, it is time to, to go inwards, to integrate, to, to bring, again, it's the merging, right? It's the, like, Almost everybody I talk to in my sessions, my loved ones, there's this yearning for rest. There's this yearning for quieting down. There's this yearning for connection. And so it makes complete sense to me that um, we're having this pull towards mm -hmm. towards the moon topic and also towards these, these quieter practices while benefiting from from all the the beautiful sun creations right yeah oh there's so much there hmm i'd love to go a little bit more deeply into the moon and its phases and mm -hmm. we both know there is a lot of richness there um we just created a, a humongous body of work of writing that will be available where Everybody can go online and just look up. It's all free. Look up what phase of the moon you're born under. And there's a, a two-page description available of what that says about you. And we don't have the time in this conversation to go into that level of depth. But I would love it if you could give us a little bit of a snippet of the eight phases of the moon and just some of the qualities of like the journey that we go on as mm -hmm. a planet once a month well I just want to say quickly to anyone listening that will jump on the app you know and this is where the inspiration to create physical talismans like this one this is wait this is my phase the last quarter moon it's then I can actually engage with it there's so much information out there you know anyone can jump online and google moon phase my moon phase and they can find it all but when you engage with actual ritual and you know wearing these pieces you can start to really experience this and get some insight into what that means for you 
So when you're working with the lunar phases, it typically and culturally begins at the new moon, which is when we cannot see the new the moon, but it's still there in the sky. And the reason we can't see it is because the sun is behind it in context of the journey, even in the evening, so it's not visible. So that's the new moon. And culturally, that's been, and spiritually and esoterically, that's linked with the beginning point. It's the point where the sun and the moon are together and they're consummating something, they're bringing something together and, and the seed is planted. And that is when it's the darkness. It's like that pr primordial beginning where before everything was created. It's the expression of the stillness, the void, where you can manifest and seed into reality whatever you want. And so the new moon typically is a time to really set an intention or you can rejuvenate ongoing intentions. It's not like, okay, I'm going to seed this in now and it's going to happen next week. If it were the case, my life would look pretty spectacular, I must say. <laughs> but it's a moment to just get in, into yourself, sit in the dark of the moon, Animals are quiet. Nature is quiet. Truly go out at the next new moon and feel the stillness in the field. It's really there. That's not a projection. It's not just the meaning we give it. That is something you can experience. So if you're born at the new moon, think of those themes, those symbols. You'll, you'll see that you are more introspective. You are also somebody that can make things happen even though it's the, the dark of the moon. And so from that point, the moon starts to build in her light. The dark moon is usually about three days and then she starts to show up as a slither, like the tip of your fingernail, and she's just this gorgeous beginning point, which in some cultures that's when you really set intentions. Um, I personally start the dark I've always felt there's just more potency in that energy and then the light starts to build so this is now the waxing phase and as you journey through the phases you'll feel something starting to build so once the moon reaches the gibbous phase which is where it's three quarters full usually what you've seeded in on an esoteric level this is when you can start to see What's showing up to support you? Actually, I've jumped ahead. I'm going to come back to the first um, crescent, waxing crescent, which is one of the most spiritual points in the lunar cycle. You'll see in many cultures, many spiritual lineages, the crescent moon. And I know for me personally, I've studied and practiced deeply with Tibetan Buddhism. And the crescent moons are when you can really get in touch with some potent deities and go very deep with your work. And I would say our ancestors noticed something about these times. They really, really would have observed people were more introspective. Um, and, you know, again, we don't have it all recorded, but my feeling is our ancestors did deep ritual with the key eight phases. So... Then we get to the full moon. The moon is completely lit up. The moon has separated from the sun. She's on the opposite side now and she is starting to individuate. She has the seed. She is birthing. It's when what you've seeded in the new moon can start to take form. It can start to um, manifest and you can start seeing the richness of what you've been wanting to create. Also, the full moon, you can imagine it's like a huge spotlight lighting up all of the dark shadows of Earth. Again, go out at a full moon and listen to nature. It's more stimulated. The animals can hunt better. There's activity. And again, imagine you were living with nature more closely to it. You would notice that stirring you would you would experience it and the other aspect of the full moon this spotlight piece it's lighting up all the dark corners 
So it's a time when you can see your shadow. It's a time when you can identify what you need to let go of. There's an amplification. Things are stirred up. People get weird on a full moon. I cannot tell you how many people have reached out to me and said, I'm not sleeping. Why is it that at a full moon I can't sleep properly? They're not, I'm truly, these are not spiritual people. They're not, this is before I even started sharing publicly on um, social media about the moon phases. People notice this stuff. And so that is why most cultures will work with the full moon as a letting go. So it's a culmination of what you've been seeding in. And as that's ripening and it's opening, that light is shining on your shadows and showing you what you can let go of. So that is when we work with release. We let go. We complete on karmic cycles and stories and patterns we, that are repeating. We let go. We make a decision. I'm, I'm done with this. And then the moon moves into its waning phase where it starts to release. So the way that the relationship between the sun and moon work affects the shadow and, and earth. So it starts losing its light. And this is the, the part of the lunar phase where you're letting go, you're releasing, you're able to clear out. People born in the second half of the lunar phase tend to be able to let go easy easier they tend to be able to accept things more easily that are dis, uh, that are breaking down they can be people that are really focused on breaking down things that don't work whereas people born in the first phase tend to be more about earthing creating um, up to the full moon illuminating so it's so interesting to find out what your own lunar phase is and to start journeying with that. Um, another piece I want to bring in, and maybe you're going to ask this, is what some people have referred to as your power day. And that is when you find out the exact day you were born on in the lunar cycle. And it's really easy to find out. Literally go on astro.com. Um, there's apps and you can key in. You need your time of birth um, or pretty close to with the moon to get your lunar phase. If you have, if you don't have your time of birth, you can get that day. So that's okay for the lunar phase. But you can find out what your actual day is and you can mark it in your calendar and you can check out if you notice something on that day. If it feels more in sync or you feel like there's more harmony, you'll know, and it's your power day. And if you're somebody that works in ritual, it's a really beautiful day to do very personal. You know, you can begin things even if you're in the last quarter phase like I am. You can initiate projects. But it's a day that I always notice, you know, and I always I feel I do. And, it, okay, it could be the meaning I'm giving it, but you know what? Actually, it's not because there's stories I won't bore you guys with where I had experiences and I'd look up. Christina, be, I remember one day going out to do a ritual and I was – just needed a ritual and so I just needed to go and do some stuff and I went out to my sacred place in nature uh, and I was driving out and I looked out and I'm like oh, of course it's last quarter moon and just went oh wow so there is something to it so I really recommend getting in touch with that and as we've discussed so much already it's not just your lunar phase it's such a shift when you just stop and look at the moon you just stop and you look, something happens. You know, there is a symmetry, there is a beauty coded into nature that when you just look at it, your body registers it, your nervous system starts to align itself to it. That is not just a hippy-dippy concept. There is research that is, you know, observing these um experiences that people have you know if you're really stressed out go into nature look at the moon you don't even have to do anything that is a ritual in itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you 
I'd love to go into into those details a bit more um, because I was born under the waxing crescent moon, and it was it's been so fascinating to learn more about this phase and to to deepen my own understanding of my sensitivities, why I have this this comfort with the darkness almost with going inwards, but then also this you know, this anticipation, that's that sliver of light. And um, you mentioned you were born in the last quarter. And I'm curious, what does that mean to you? And um, what are some of just, what are some of the understandings about yourself that you've gained from knowing that? Well, for me, understanding the last quarter moon phase it and then you know what I find really helpful is looking at the people closest to you as well because it can give you that context and the contrast so I looked at my phase and it made sense because the last quarter moon the moon is transitioning from this bright richness and it's about letting go and my (laughs) whole life has been about letting go about the breaking down of concepts, personality, ego, and I notice in my work, and I can imagine if I was born at a full moon, let's just, let's imagine it's an exact science, that I would say my, my approach to my business potentially would be really different because the full moon, they're typically really obvious characters, you know, like they're typically... You can, you, you can feel a full moon person when they walk into a room. They are, they're larger than life. And so I can imagine if that were my lunar phase, I, I would say I'd be approaching this very, very differently. So knowing that for me helped me, A, you know, um, recognise timings for when things feel easier, honestly, Always after the full moon, I notice those 10 to 14 days following, I just feel more at peace. You know, that just feels easy. And as we go into that, those days after the last quarter moon, I actually feel really comfortable with the world. And, you know, that's when I was born. I was born into that rhythm with the cycles. So it's helped me just kind of understand my energy patterns, how I move through the cycle. Um, I've actually gone through menopause, so I'm not on that lunar, you know, the moon cycle. So I'm I'm noticing my relationship to the moon has morphed and I can see I'm more in harmony with that, which actually feels really beautiful coming out of that, you know, the menstruation cycle into that second, you know, phase of life or, yeah. And I just want to say with the, the crescent moon, it is, it's that um, glimmer of what's possible, but it's not like, you know, this big full moon energy. Like, and I've spent a lot of time with you and knowing that about you, it just makes so much sense because you've right. always got this, this glimmer, <laughs> this, this like seed and it's just, it's there and you really, that's how your your art, your designs are. It's like it's not in your face, but it's rich with potential, you know, and it's beautiful and deeply spiritual, which is, again, this is, I know in Tibetan Buddhism the crescent moons are really potent times in the lunar phase. Um, I, I, I think that it is in um, the Islamic tradition the crescent moon is also very powerful. So I think there's a lot more symbology and depth to the crescent moon that if, you know, if somebody's listening to this and they discover they're born at that crescent moon, go and do a deep dive and then sit with it and experience it and look at, you know, maybe you could share a little bit about what you realise by knowing mm-hmm. that was the phase you were born in. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one piece that comes through also with you sharing being being born on a waning phase is there's deep peace that comes over me of, of the acknowledgement that 
all of it is precious and important. And I was mm-hmm. sitting with a dear friend the other day who, I don't know, she somehow mentioned, she's like, obviously, most everybody's favorite moon phase is the full moon. And I was like, actually, mine, it's not. Mine is the new moon. She's like, yeah, obviously, because you're sensitive matters. And I was just laughing. I was like, yeah, that kind of sums it up. Like, we are currently living in a world where, yes, we might make the assumption quite easily that being this bright full moon energy and we very much need those people so thank you for the ones of you that are full moon people and are just shining brightly and shining the way and we live in a time where those ones are in the spotlight and the other ones that might be a bit more quiet and that might be speaking a bit more about letting go and about the you know the darker more inward things they don't have as much of a voice yet and I do feel that things are shifting a little bit Mm -hmm. where even through the yeah through the conversations but also through the the media right we're sitting here right now in a very cozy environment we're both more introverted we both would be freaking out and our minds probably would stop working if we were in front of a large group of people right now I know for myself nothing works anymore like and sitting with you right now my mind is working I can actually bring through what I'm feeling, what wants to be said, what needs to be said. And so I feel that the world that we live in is also creating possibilities for the ones of us that are a little bit more soft and, and mm-hmm. um, you know, delicate slithers of light. And mm-hmm. learning that about myself has just brought a lot of peace of like, oh, wait, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with the way my system and my soul and my mm-hmm. moments when I'm lit up work, it doesn't have to be cookie cutter how every, everybody can't be the same. And that's that's been the biggest message for me in all of that, of the deep acknowledgement of the different, the different facets that are needed on in so many ways, in so many layers, you're speaking about menopause, right? To reclaim Mm. that, to be like, this is the second phase where women get to actually just drop all of the, excuse my language, BS, and they just get to be, and there's a boldness that comes through that Mm. is very different from, from the that full moon brightness and and youth you know that 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 has a certain glow to it but there's a mm-hmm. like i can feel it in my gut and so yeah the 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 teachings that have come through for me is like this deep sense of peace about the yeah. perfection of of it all of all yeah. the different pieces of it and not being afraid of the dark which um I'm just I'm I'm where I'm the first one wearing the pieces, including you, which is uh, we we just got it. so the ones of you are listening. I'm also on camera with Paula, and um, when she came on earlier, I was like, oh my god, she's wearing the new pieces. It's the first time that I'm seeing them on somebody, and it it means so much. And um, the inscriptions have been really really important to me as well as they as they always are, right? And um. So mm-hmm. for me, I'm wearing the the waxing crescent, and um, the inscription is, "I see in the dark, I know the light." And to me, that is so much of that of like, I see in the dark. It's okay that sometimes we go through darkness, and mm-hmm. yet I know the light. I know, I know, I'm gonna come out of this, and I know there's there's something in this. Um, And the other piece that's been very interesting for me in this process, because I've been feeling drawn to this one design from very early on, and it's it's the first quarter. It's not when I was born, and it's actually, it's the phase that would come after when I was born. Um, and the inscription is all is possible. And I actually, um, we're still like in the, in the sample process as we're recording this. And I just, I took the samples yesterday from my production manager and I'm like, I'm wearing the earrings, I'm wearing the bracelet, I'm wearing the necklace. I'm like, I just need to know right now that all is possible. And, yeah. um, 
So, so it, you know, speaking of rituals, speaking of, of symbols, of really making these phases our own and finding finding that strength of like I can I get to be myself and I can just go on and live my life. I don't have to worry that I need to be different, that I need to be mm-hmm. brighter or more confident or feel okay about public speaking in front of 200 people. No, we can find our own ways that match who we truly are and who we are meant to be in this world, what we're meant to bring in this world. Mm. Um, I just spoke a lot. And can I, can I yes. say something to that? Is that yes, okay? Please. Just very quickly, what you've articulated is just, again, and like it's how it feels in my body with this life is cyclical. That lunar phase is more intimate with us we can experience it anyone can whereas the solar phase you have to be a scientist and you have to have equipment to be able to be in harmony with it whereas the lunar phase teaches and it's taught me how to surrender how to let go yes I'm last quarter moon guys we know this now but also that this too shall pass you know that the light comes again like you said Christina and life is cyclical. It's not this capitalistic post-industrialization, up, 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 more, more, more. That internalized capitalism just dissolves in the light, the dark, and the phases and the cycles of the moon. You sit and you just go, wait a minute. I don't have to be like that person. Comparing yourself ceases mm-hmm. when you sit with your own natal blueprint and you start to explore the dimensions of your own astrological chart of the time you were born the snapshot of the sky where was the moon where was venus was she visible was she a morning star what was really going on and then i can just be me and that is why i am so passionate about astrology ritual and the lunar phases because it gives me an experience of something unique to myself not special separation but just ah I can you mean I can just be someone that helps people let their crap go yeah okay I'm gonna do that as a job that is my job (laughs) yes thank you you do such an amazing job at it yeah yeah um and I just want to say one more yes sorry (laughs) go for it no I just want to honestly truly say that when I so I've been wearing this piece for two days and at first I'm like oh it's just so beautiful and then when I look in the mirror and I see it I'm being so sincere it really I can't explain it it does something to me and I just wish you know people to have like I said before that experience that visual reminder of what it is and this piece and that piece that you just pointed out it was the last quarter that you had pointed out right now, yeah? The one, yeah. Yeah, the one yeah, you're holding up. Last, that's the last yeah. quarter, and this is the whole All the phase things. of the mountains. If I could have drawn something to had, <laughs> this would have been it. So this is stunning, Christine. Yeah. It's so mm. beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I just love that we get to create what we create. <laughs> And we get to just be us in the environment that works for us. And, and exactly. Yeah. Hmm. And and with technology, this is where science, solar, mm-hmm. we're going to come together. With technology, yep. with this creation, we get to be ourselves more. I get to sit in intimate exchange with people all over the world. And it's not this big public confrontational thing, mm-hmm. like you said, like, this is actually a beautiful place where we can see in action solar yeah. luna in harmony with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I know we've spoken a lot about rituals already, and I'd love to speak a bit more about examples of rituals. What would be some, some rituals pe- people can do to honor the phases of the moon? and the phases of their own lives. Um, And with that, I want to weave in a frequent term that is to work with the moon. And some people might be like, what in the world does that mean? So, yeah. what what do you have to say? So, 
Thank you. Um, so to work with the moon means what we've talked about, observing it. The first step is to observe the moon and go, actually, yeah, there's a moon out there. One of my favourite rituals is to sit with a friend at a full moon, have, you know, get some dinner. If you're by the coast, go by the coast because it's, she'll be rising up over the ocean and just look at it and talk about what you're letting go of. It doesn't have to be these structured formal rituals all the time. Um, you know, I always make my boys look at the moon. I'm like, look at this, it's, you know, a bit of a setup. But a really simple way that you don't need anyone, you can remember this from just this moment, the new moon is about setting an intention, full moon is letting go. Just start with those two phases initially. And the new moon, at the new moon, what I tend to do is just sit down with pen and paper and I write down what I want for my life. What, what would I like to be happier? Do I want to feel more confident? Do I want a new car? I'm not really a fan of trying to manifest cars, but whatever you feel, just start working with that, sitting with that. And I tend to hold on to that and I put it on my altar or just somewhere sacred and I let it build with the light of the moon up until the full moon. And so typically at a full moon, I will work with releasing those intentions by burning it and just letting it go, just let that go into the field to manifest as it needs to. Uh, and then I also sit down at the full moon, everything's amplified, everyone's feeling the feels, and I write down what I'm letting go of. And I also practice, you know, burning that as a gesture and a deep symbol of just letting that stuff go. You know, working with the moon, engaging with its phases, it can be so empowering if you come at it with this intention and a deeper understanding that, like we've talked about, our ancestors did this. This was normal. This is not a weird um, way to live. And, you know, just being intentional that this is, like I see the full moon, Christina, as for me it's like mental hygiene. I let go of all my rubbish, all my built-up stuff. I reset always at the full moon. I just like I let it go. And I watch it actually the more you engage with it, You'll notice that in the days leading up, it's happening organically. You get into the rhythm with it and the actual sitting down becomes a joyous experience, not actually the moment. Um, but, yeah, really be intentional. And, and the power of it is you will start to get in touch with your inner world. And this can be a way to start developing out a practice of mindfulness. And in a nutshell, Mindfulness is just being aware of your thoughts, being aware of your triggers, being aware of what subconscious forces are driving you. Because as soon as you're aware of it, you then, in that moment of observing it, you have power over it. And like we talked about earlier, you can start to shift your meaning and your story. And then you work with the lunar phases as a personal empowerment, active power to get really intentional about who you want to be and, and how you want to live. And honestly, the world has told all of us that we just have to accept what's going on in there. And it's rubbish. You actually, you don't. And you can start to shift yourself by working with the new moon and saying, I'm committed to, you know, looking after my health. And you see that in, and it might take you a year of seeing it in at each new moon. And you get to the new moon in Virgo, which is really about health and, and you might feel a boost, you know, and you, you build it up and you'll find your internal reality will, will morph with this. So it is not just moon magic, which I'm not anti, it's so much more. It really can be a spiritual practice, if you want to say, like as in repetitively engaging with this and then at the full moon you're just letting go and you're releasing your negativity so yeah it's 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 powerful and the rituals are simple new moon set intentions full moon let go 
And then if you want to go a next step, just really quickly, the quarter moon phases. So they are the transition points between the new and full moon, the full moon and the new moon. At the first quarter, you want to look at what's actually supporting your new moon intentions. Do you need to go and see a therapist, a lawyer, a healer, get a massage, talk to a friend? What is actually supporting your intention? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then Mm -hmm. at the last quarter moon, what is in the way of what you want to manifest? What, What is blocking it? And it can be a really potent time to sit again with paper and pen. I'm letting this go. And you can keep letting go all the way up to the new moon. And then you wipe the slate clear, you reset, you start again. The new moon tells us that you can start over anytime you want in this life. doesn't matter how horrible, hard, traumatic it's been, you can start over. And that's, yeah, why I love these lunar phases. They've taught me so much. Like it's endless. Teachings. And it's right there and it keeps going, right? Yeah. And it kept going before we were here and it will keep going after we go. And there's something yes. so soothing about that. Um, we're almost coming towards the end. And there's one piece that I'd love to <clears throat> chat about still. And you you spoke in the beginning um, that the moon is almost like the mother to me. I'm, I'm always resonating with the grandmother energy and as women there's also a piece around the effects of women who menstruate and also the women who who don't menstruate anymore and I just love to see if there's any any thoughts that come through around the moon and the feminine energies that it's connected with well as we know so the moon follows roughly the exact same cycle as if the woman's um, typical menstruation cycle. So we know that there is some correlation there. There's some synchronicity. And like I said, women would carve out on the bone, you know, throughout history. So it's that invitation towards the lunar, which is more feminine, which is, this internal um, introspective dive, which again, as I was saying before, you can really heal when you know what's going on inside. When it comes to the feminine wisdom, the lunar phases, it's what we've been talking about this whole time, Christina. It's that recognition that there are phases, there are cycles, grandmother wisdom. You know, the grandmothers know that when the little child falls over, the grandmother can observe that from a very different place to anyone else in the tribe. She knows that the little one needs to bump themselves and realise they're okay and get back up and dust themselves. She can see. She knows if it's a big wound. She'll go over there and tend appropriately, not reacting, not rushing in. It's that deeper acceptance that life is cyclical. Life ebbs and flows with the tides which the moon rules and affects. So the grandmother energy in the moon, as she's there for all of it, she's been watching us lovingly forever, for as long as the moon's been there anyway. And it's this realisation of this will pass. Let the cycles move through me. You know, this this beautiful, rich letting go. Mm -hmm. Mm, thank you. Mm, I love sitting with you. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. I'd love for you to share your offerings and your offerings related to the moon as well, because I know there's so much richness in what you're creating. So at the moment, I have an offering called the Lunar Project which was actually inspired by one of my clients. She's like, you know, this lunar project that we're kind of doing because we'd already been working with the lunar phases just in our personal interaction. So it was just beautiful, natural birthing of this offering. And it really came from this desire to help people have a way to 
take back some of their power, you know, really, and also to engage with ritual and practices that complement work they're doing in a spiritual lineage or with a therapist because it's that it's the work you can do in between. You know, it's it's literally where you can start to awaken to your own, becoming your own therapist. Not that that replaces external support ever. We need that. We're social creatures. So this offering is an invitation into learning more about astrology. So I'm at the moment doing live events where I invite people to jump on a call. And in that call, the first part, I go through the the bigger cycles and I'm trying all the time to distill it down into what does that mean for us which is easier said than done but you know what is this Jupiter Neptune cycle right now that's kicking off a 10 to 13 year um, expansion in everything to do with creativity spirituality that's a big cycle so I try to bring that in into the moment in a way that people can relate to I talk about the astrological sign that the moon is in because that will be giving a flavour of what the ritual is or what we're working on. So, for example, the recent full moon was in Libra and what I noticed was a lot of people's relationships were being stirred up. So I focused on that call with supporting people on a deep journey. So the second half of the call is the meditation slash ritual it's going into the experiential level, not just information. This moon is full in Libra and you read it and you're like, okay, well, what does that mean to me? So the Lunar Project is an invitation to start journeying with it. You don't need to be an astrologer. You don't even need to know your own birth chart. So it's not like that. I have people that work intensively with me at the moment that are learning more about astrology and mostly their own chart, which I think is the place to start. Um, but then we go on a deep dive and we were letting go of relationship karmic loops because the labor rules relationships, the full moon is letting go. So we worked with that and it was really beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, um, you can go to my website and you can just join for one off event, or you can do the whole next, uh, 11 cycles with me. And another thing I'll just quickly drop in is that there are eclipses coming up. So the next new moon in in just under two weeks will be a a solar eclipse, which is like a new moon on steroids. And I'm doing a masterclass to to discuss that eclipse and then the full moon total lunar eclipse in Scorpio, which is two weeks after that, where it's a potent time to let go of unhealthy power dynamics and so much more so. The eclipses Mm. is a whole other thing, Mm -hmm. which is super powerful stuff. But, you know, if you want to know more about that, you can go and check out my website. Thank you for letting me talk about that. And we're putting all the links in the show notes so um, you can easily find Paula and all the beauty that she creates for the world. Thank you so, so much, Paula. I love you. I love love you too. having you in my life. for me to sit and just talk about the moon with such depth and someone that's you know gets it it's just mm-hmm. the most nourishing thing so I know. Thank you. and the jewel like everything I'm so excited about this offering and what you know it can start to open people's minds to other mm-hmm. ways to explore who they are their relationship to nature to the moon to the celestial movements it's just yeah. Stunning, Christina. Oh, so we, get to, we get to do what we what we what just comes through us. What a what yeah. an incredible gift.